The helicopter crash occurred on May 19th when the Iranian delegation was returning from a visit to Azerbaijan. As a result of the collision with a hill in dense fog, the helicopter burned down and all passengers died. The Iranian military's initial report found no third-party involvement or attack. At least, this is the version of events presented to us. A commission appointed by General Mohammad Baghari is investigating the causes of the disaster. The situation has sparked numerous speculations and conspiracy theories, even though investigators' preliminary findings did not show any signs of gunfire or other similar traces. The accident occurred in difficult weather conditions, and in addition to Raisi, Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullahian and two high-ranking military commanders also died. On April 1, 1979, after the Islamic Revolution, the Islamic Republic of Iran was proclaimed, introducing a system combining modern democracy with religious dictatorship. Iran has a popularly elected parliament and president, but overseen by a velahat e fahi a Shiite theologian who's head of state, and a guardian council that checks the compatibility of laws with Islam. Veliad e fahi is a concept in Shia Islam, meaning ruled by a scholar in Islamic law, assuming that the highest authority in the state should be exercised by a qualified theologian. Iran describes itself as the first democracy in the Middle East, without discrimination of nationalities, and wants to spread the Islamic revolution to other countries. According to the opposition website Iran International, the authorities are trying to convince the public that it was not an attack in order to prevent speculation about a power struggle. Many Iranians, due to their distrust of official government communications, suspect that the disaster may have been part of internal political games. Speculation was particularly frequent regarding Ayatollah Ali Khamenei's eldest son, Mojtaba, as a potential successor. Iran International points out that in the past, the Iranian authorities have repeatedly tried to hide the real causes of the tragedy, as was the case with the downing of a Ukrainian passenger plane by the air defense of the Revolutionary Guard. The authorities then denied responsibility for several days, until footage emerged showing the plane being hit by a missile. During a press conference in Minsk after the Russian-Belarusian talks, Russian President Vladimir Putin spoke about Russian-Iranian relations and the recent helicopter crash in Iran. Putin referred to the information that the Iranian delegation was returning from Azerbaijan on board three helicopters, including an American Bell 212 that crashed, while two Russian helicopters survived the flight without problems. In the context of relations between Russia and Iran, the Russian president expressed hope for their further development and cooperation between the two countries on international issues, even after the death of the Iranian president. The country will be temporarily ruled by the vice president, but presidential elections should be held in Iran soon. However, as the expert suggests, regardless of who wins, not much should change in the country. Another issue is that only people carefully selected by the regime are allowed to join the group of candidates. There's been speculation that Ebrahim Raisi could have been the successor to Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. His ratings were so high that he was indicated as a certain candidate to take over this position. However, recently the situation has become more complicated. For some, however, this is a reason to rejoice. The death of President Ebrahim Raisi sparked joy among many Iranians, especially among members of the opposition. Raisi was responsible for the massacre of 30,000 political prisoners in Iran in 1988, most of them members of the opposition Mujahideen. Khavad Dabiran of the National Council of the Iranian Resistance Movement stated that almost every family in Iran had been harmed by him in some way. Oppositionists in exile, including in Germany, expressed hope that Raisi's death could mean the beginning of a new path for Iran. Mohammad Reza Sharafati, an Iranian living in Germany, spoke of joy and hope for regaining a free country. In London, there was dancing and music in front of the Iranian embassy, and one Iranian resident who wished to remain anonymous admitted that the news of Raisi's death was the only reason for her joy in recent years. But for now, thank you for watching and we encourage you to subscribe and click the like button. We also invite you to watch our other videos.